Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar tonight. Thanks for staying up late. Um, just heard from one or two people that they've decided to go to bed instead of listen to this, but um, they're a bit tired, and they're also in New Zealand, so they're two, two hours in front. So thank you for coming. Chris, Greg, again, good to see you on board, and Matthew and, and everybody else This has joined uh, today. And... Um, what we wanted to give you tonight, uh, as a photographer myself and as a business coach now to photographers, I coach a lot of photographers, and they're all at different stages of the business. Some are successful, while others struggle a little bit to find the success that they're looking for and to make forward progress and achieve their desired financial goals. Tonight, we hope we can help those that are looking for that little bit of help to flick the switch to get those photographers who are struggling a little, to give them a little bit of focus and uh, to get them going ahead, especially in the area tonight of social media. Next week we'll be doing something similar on selling and it's always taking that next step that seems to be the hardest. So what is the difference between those that are very successful and those that struggle? We're going to look at that tonight and uh, to help me out, I've asked uh, along uh, Joanna Barton, who's owner of Confetti Designs um, here in Melbourne. So, hi, Joanna. Hi, Bernie. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Pleasure to be with you again. Yes, now, Joanna and I have had long discussions about this thing, about what stops people, what, what stops people progressing forward. And uh, we hope we've uh, got some answers for you. And uh, certainly I know that Joanna has got some great information, step-by-step um, -step instructions, flicking that switch on social media. So we'll, we'll start and, and we'll just look at uh, where we, you know, we've got to look at finding the belief in ourselves to create a better photography business. If we don't find that belief in ourselves, then we can't progress forward. So we're going to look at and analyze that a bit. So, Joanna, tell us a little bit about what you've discovered in, in doing a lot of market research, which I know you've done on this and uh, talked to a lot of photographers that I've coached. Give us some of the, the key qualities uh, that uh, make a successful photographer different than those that struggle. So the interesting thing I found uh, in talking to quite a few of your clients, Bernie, and also in doing some research just in general about what makes um, business owners successful, and uh, you know they come down to a range of qualities like uh, tenacity. So this is a long haul thing. If you're a business owner and if you're in this photography business, uh, it's your passion and it is a long haul thing because it takes a while to build. So you need to have that tenacity and that willingness. It's like a training for a marathon. The other one is being able to tolerate ambiguity. So it's that not knowing factor. And this is a really interesting one because it means that you have to take kind of like a leap of faith. You've got to take some actions and just like you're always saying to me, Bernie, about test and measure. You know, you never know if this thing is going to work out, but if you don't do it, you don't find out. You know, Thomas Edison says that famous quote that they say, oh, how did you feel that you failed at making a light bulb so many times? He said, I didn't fail all those times. I learned how not to do it. So it's all a matter of perception, and that tolerating that not knowing is, is essential, and, uh, and it's why a lot of people uh, who are successful are successful. The other one is vision. So that's being able to trust your gut and actually act on that idea and not believe what society is telling you or someone else is telling you that it's not a good idea to take that photo or go out into that field or do whatever it is. You know, you have to have a vision and kind of go with it. Uh, and then self-belief, uh, which will, I think really is actually the, the main one, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Flexibility, so being able to adapt. You know, we can get... Um, you know, as a business owner myself, I know that I can have bad days or I can get thrown a curveball and I've got to be able to be flexible. I'm not always going to do it perfectly, but I've got to be willing to kind of, you know, open my mind to different ideas. And then I've got to be able to be willing to take a risk. Now, all of these, and in talking to your people, you know, your clients, uh, and some of my clients now who are also um, in the photography business, yeah. is understanding that self-belief is that the root of all of this because if I don't have this belief in myself, 
uh, it's really hard for me to run a marathon. <laughs> if I don't have belief in myself, I can't trust my gut. Um, I can't be flexible. I can't um, take a risk because I don't feel I've got it within me. You know, so the the quality, the one of these key qualities that almost um, binds them all together is having this self belief. And I suppose uh, uh, the the way you would get that is by taking action and be prepared to fail. I mean, uh, everybody assumes that they they see photographers, they look at the website, they think they're super successful, they think they're making a fortune and all of that, but they don't know really what they're doing but they do see that those photographers have belief in themselves. And the way I think you get belief in yourself is by taking action and not fearing failure. That if you understand failure is just another rung on the ladder upwards towards your success, then the more failures you can do, the quicker you can get to your goal and get to the top of the ladder. So the thing about failure is that it's also that's also a judgment. If someone saying that that was a failure is a judgment. So nothing actually is a failure. Something is just a result. And that is the key thing that uh, I know for myself is that the moment I put that word onto it, I then start beating myself up that I made that mistake, that I didn't charge that person what my time was worth, or I didn't act on an idea and now I've seen someone else do it. You know, these are not failures. Is just um, uh, is just syntax. It's really all you're getting. Like you constantly say, test and measure. I'm just taking an action, and I'm going to get a result. And that was, and that's that thing where you then you don't use every single thing as a as an opportunity to beat yourself up and say, look, here's the evidence. I'm useless. I'm not going to be as good as them. Yeah. And the other thing about this self belief is that uh, you know people will say, and I've coached lots of. Um, Lot, lot, um, you know, quite a few women in business where uh, they will say, you know, they will look outside at other people and compare themselves. Yeah. And I say, well, you're actually only seeing the highlight reel and you're comparing your sense of self, which is not great today, you're lacking a bit of confidence and you're looking outwards at them and going, well, look at what they're showing me. They're showing me they're, that, that they're successful. And what we forget is that every single human being suffers from all of this self-belief. But the difference between those that are successful and those that aren't are the ones that take the action. And when it comes down to someone like you, Bernie, I know that you, you've shared with me that the ones that kind of, you know, you, you, we catch up and you talk about how such and such did this and they tried what you suggested and look at what happened. And, you know, it's about, um, and, and what that shows me is that some people just believe it, they either don't want to let you down <laughs> because they're paying you to be their coach and you've given them an action or a suggestion to take and they don't want to let you down by the next week when they have to speak to you and then there are those that just in their mind they might say yes yes and then there's a but it won't work for me yeah. or um, you know you don't understand um, I haven't got the support I'm actually not sure how to do that or I actually physically cannot and sometimes people, it's obviously really hard for people to say, I don't really know what to do or how to do it uh, or to ask for help. Uh, and, you know, that can be that that next stumbling block that you've got to deal with. Yes, yeah, so I suppose we can all find excuses not to. But that's uh, generally, and I'm just talking to myself, um, which is like a lot of others, if you overthink it, you tend not to do it. I, I'm one that just does it. So I'll, 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 I'll just do it because I'm willing to face the circumstance, whatever it is, and accept the circumstance. And that's what I find exciting. It's walking into the unknown. And how yeah, exciting so, is that? Yeah, so in talking to your clients, you know, that I spoke to some that had taken the action because they, you know, they'd got them, their business to a certain point. And then they thought, well, I'm going to have to hire someone who's going to, who's had the runs on the board, who now does this as a job, and I'm going to hire this Bernie chap. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then this Bernie chap gives them an idea, and they kind of go, well, I'm paying him to give me ideas, so, you know, what have I, what have I got to lose? And one person in particular, which was really interesting, said, um, 
you know, often they had not taken action on ideas because they wanted it to be perfect. Yeah. And they were projecting, if, if Bernie tells me to do this, what if it fails? Or, um, you know, I need it to be perfect before I do it. And, you know, they had this uh, epiphany when they realized, well, I've got to start because I'm never going to actually be ready. I'm never, it's never actually, the conditions are never going to be perfect because I will always put in a barrier to take that action, to try that thing that he suggested. Um, but having that mind shift for this, one, one of your, your clients was, you know, I'm going to start before I think I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, well, what a good place to start before you're ready. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, and I think that that was, um, and that came across as well from a, a couple of people that, um, you know, they might have sat on your ideas for a year until they were at the right mindset or they yeah. were too afraid to actually ask for help. Yeah. Uh, so one of those things I often say to people is, you know, act as if you have that self-belief. So, okay, so today I don't really look at my photos and feel that they're worthy of charging X, Y, Z. But... Um, I'm going to act as if they are because at some point the more that you act and you take that action and you ask and you ask for help, you um, put yourself out there like we'll talk about in social media, you act as if you have that confidence already, your insides which is your emotional mental state and your outsides, the actions that you're taking will then meet in the middle. And that is, um, you, you know, that that is classic kind of transformation work as well. Is that you you go out into the world and you just take that action just for today, just for one day. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to give it a um, I'm going to give it a good go. I'm going to try it. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to start before I'm ready. I'm going to put up that landing page. I'm going to post that thing on social media, yeah. and I'm just going to I'm just going to let it go, because if you move to the next slide, um, Bernie, you know that thing about fear. You know, fear and perfectionism, because it, it's a thief of it's a thief of you taking action, and it's a thief of your success. Mm -hmm. You know, we think it's got to be perfect. What if I make a spelling mistake? What if no one likes that photo? What if another photographer looks at that photo and says that that's crap? I've edited it badly. Or what if no one shares it? You know, all of these what ifs mean that you are sitting in procrastination and you're getting no results. And that's a terrible thing when you're so many talented photographers out there. Mm. It's just, you know, try, just just take that step and try. And the truth about perfectionism is my sense of perfectionism is my perception. You, I might say to you, okay, Bernie, this looks perfect. And you're going to look at it and go, well, no, it's not really. I don't see that as perfect. <laughs> and I've just wasted, you know, how much of my life thinking that things have to be a certain way. And you look at it and go, well, that doesn't reach my level anyway. So it, it is a complete fallacy. It's all about a perception. I think a lot of photographers like to work towards that perfect with the post-production and things they do. They like to think things are perfect. But as you say, um, just like beauty, I suppose, it's in the eye of the beholder. And, and, that, and what does your customer know? Does your customer know the techniques? Does your customer know um, all of the principles that you know and see with your eyes? No, they just want good enough is good enough. Yeah, you know, they just want to be um, happy with the result that they see. That's right. And, I, I get, you know, we'll talk a, a bit more about that next week and selling and pricing and things. But yeah. um, to indulge, you know, and then indulge your perfectionism in ways that is um, not having an impact on your, um, on your take home, on your salary, on your income, on your business. Uh, I think um, Janelle from Immerse, Immerse, Immersive? Yep. yep. Uh, you know, said that she she learned to go out and, and get inspired and do things for herself, her passion projects. You know, and that's when you spend your hours in the dark room or on you know Photoshop or whatever it is, and uh, and indulge that perfectionism, but leave the other stuff to making um, to making money and taking yeah. action. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm a great one about just get out there and get started before you think you're ready. Yeah. So I guess we should um, kind of bring it into social media and why this is so relevant. Yep. So we've talked uh, about fear and perfectionism. Um, what's the impact this has on our social media activity is, is the question, right, that, that, that we ask you. That, yeah. As we said, 
we then find more excuses. Oh, I don't have time. I don't know where to start. I like ideas. That won't work for me. How are we going to get people to start to take action simply? So well, I'm going to um, – well, I've got a strategy, um, kind of like a plan that we'll go through and I'll show some examples. But I want, what I really want to say is that uh, the thing about photography is that um, – is that there? You know, there is there is no one newer than you. And I say this all the time. I say it to my kids. It's a corny thing from Dr. Seuss, yeah. but there is only one of you. There's only one of me. There's only one of our children. No one is a clone. So that means that your perception and your skills and ability in taking photos, and the way that you interact with someone is completely unique. Mm-hmm. So that is where your strength and your confidence must come from to go. You have a gift that that not everyone in the world has. So you've got to embrace that. And that is what social media is about too, is embracing you and showing who you are. But we're afraid cannot... of that, you see, because we're afraid that people won't like us. But you're not going to get everybody to like you anyway. You've got to get comfortable with that. Not everybody is going to be your customer. Not everybody is going to be... Your, and you don't want them to be. There's some horrible, mean, mingy, judgmental people out there. You don't want them. <laughs> Are you telling me you can't please all of the people all of the time? No, no. Um, yes, I am telling you that. You can't. And you don't want to waste your energy on them. You want to spend your time surrounded by the people that love you and think that you're fabulous. And social media is a great one for that. Um, yeah. You know, sh- Social media is about showing who you are and allowing people to connect with you and what you do and this magic that you produce. You know, be confident. And be to confident do it, and proud. Do it without fear. Well, you can even do it with fear, but just do it. Yes. You know? Okay, we'll <laughs> do people, it. We'll do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Come yeah. on. Yeah, that's oh, right. You know, social media is How do we get going here? We, 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 we don't know what to do. We're unsure. Give us what to do, give us some actions. And by the way, if any, you know, all those of you who are listening out there and you're thinking, oh, I'm writing this down or whatever, get smart about it. Just photograph your screen with your iPhone, hey? That's pretty easy to keep all your notes. If you just photograph this, this will give you your notes. So just photograph each screen, then you won't need notes, and then you can uh, review them tomorrow. Okay, sorry, Joanna, if you'd like to carry on. Yeah, so um, I did want to say one more thing, if I can just find my notes, yep. is, um, is uh, you know, don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid of the social media thing. There's no right, the thing is that there's actually no right and wrong. Most of the people that are super successful on social media have lucked it in somehow, okay? And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. That, um, but there's no guarantee, so you, you're always just testing and measuring, you know? Um, and don't get despondent. This is just one way, um, one way of building your profile, okay? And, uh, you know, if you're a, a client of Bernie's, ring him up and ask him how to do the other bits. <laughs> the the um, other thing you said which was interesting was building. The word building your profile, like w- we... I find a lot, a lot of photographers expect instant results with everything. We're in a world of instant, the, you know, the magic wand. And social media is a building thing. I mean, I create for my clients a lot of, you know, magic wand things and, and gets a, a lot of great results and gets sittings very quickly. But most of the time it's building, right? Yeah, that's right. It is. It's it is building, and it all just takes you know a, a bit of action here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, with social media, the things that I know work are the things that are real. They sh- where you're showing your vulnerability, where you're showing your personality. So always use what your personality is. And if you're not sure what that is and what your strengths are, get your family. Ask your wife and your husband and your kids. I'm sure they'll tell you quite candidly what. <laughs> You know, I've got a couple of clients who are really funny. They're, they've got very quirky senses of humour, and so that is now their kind of personality online. That is their, um, 
uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, this is like create, create a theme. So let's work through this strategy. Yep. Uh, so first of all, um, I like structure because it means that I'm not leaving anything up to um, up to chance. I'm just it's just a neat, it's like follow, following a recipe. I like following recipes. So this is why I'm kind of giving you it in in this way. Um, so create. Let's say we're going to do three posts a week. Okay, let's not start off having to do it every day. If you find that too full on, you can build up to it. So let's just commit to three or four posts uh, a week. Mm -hmm. So we're going to create themes for your days. All right, so that's four, three or four themes. Now, let's think about photographers and what your themes might be. So let's, uh, a wedding photographer, you're a family photographer and a newborn photographer. All right, yeah. so you're going to have one post a week is about a shot. So it's going to be a shot that you've taken. Another one could be action shots. So someone takes a photo of you taking a photo. Every time I post something on Facebook of me at a photo shoot taking a photo of the photographer photographing my client who's a businesswoman and we're just doing headshots for a website, yeah. I then get to tag both the photographer and my client and I instantly increase my exposure. I get all of those, both those different people's friends seeing that post. That has suddenly broadened my exposure to all of those people. Okay, yep. so theme one could be uh, uh, shoots. What where you've been on a beautiful shot. Okay, think about what your customer is going to want to see, not what you think is the most perfect shot. Um, you can get um, if you're if you're quirky and you have a quirky sense of humour, you could always get your second who's there or maybe your client to take a blooper shot of you. Mm -hmm. um, so there's so that's behind the scenes. So you've got a shoot, you've got a behind the scenes, and you could have something that's inspirational or educational. Yep. It might be that you want to help your wedding, your clients maintain their photos, or how to frame them beautifully, or so you could have um, three or four different themes. Okay, yep. then you decide on your. Would you have a testimonial? Yeah, or a testimonial. Perfect, excellent. Or, and you can have an offer. A photograph. And you could do an offer. Hmm. Yeah, you could do a photograph of the testimonial. Yep. Um, a, you could do a little short video just on your iPhone. Yep. A video of you scouting out locations. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so you think of the themes, set your themes. So you get yourself a big calendar, and a t across the top or down the side is always the days of the week, and you set every week the same day is the same theme. And then you know that on a Monday it's always going to be a shoot, a photo, a photo from the weekend because you are out doing family shots or wedding shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know that on a Wednesday it's going to be um, testimonial day. Yep. Okay. So you make it very structured and really easy for yourself. Mhm. Mm so that's our set your days. Then you can create yourself a look. Okay. So this I mean by, and I'll show you some examples. Um, create the look can be where you always have your logo and a particular kind of coloured something on it. Yeah. So when someone instantly sees this photo, and we'll do the same, you can use the same photos on Instagram, um, they kind of start to get to know that that's your, that's your post. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So it's creating a branding image template that you can use. And you can go onto Canva, so C-A-N-V-A. And that's a free software. You can do it in Photoshop if you want. If you you know you can do that, or you can just go to Canva, import uh, a photo, and put in some text. Okay. Now, one thing that I think is really easy to do is to put aside one day a month to do all of this. Yeah. Apart from maybe the photo shoot, the the, the shot that goes on the Monday that's from you've done on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, um, and you you schedule it. You produce it and you schedule it, and that's it done for your whole month. So well, that makes then, it easier, hey? It, yeah, it's then you really don't have to, planning, isn't it? It's planning. It's like planning anything else. It's like planning yeah. your I'll doing look. your bass. It's like planning, you know, getting all zero set up or whatever it is. It's planning um, your um, resources, planning what happens when you do your editing. So it's just another planning. Yep. And you know, get if you've got kids who are like teenagers, get them helping you. They love social media. 
you know, idea. I'm doing some research. So maybe we should move into um, we can move into the case study, so we can start to show you how to do some of this stuff. Yeah, and, and what are? And please, if anyone if anyone has questions, please fire those questions. Yep. Okay, so, next one, next slide. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you need to do with your social media is to make sure that your pages are set up properly. And so many people don't do this well. Um, so we've got here um, someone called Nina Claire. I um, I don't know how I found these people. I don't know how yep. I found them. <laughs> and. Um, so she's some people in the square bit there next to her name, they often have their logo. So that's quite nice too. And then you just get a beautiful shot that you know your customers are going to love. Something um, that is beautiful. Okay, you just want to put your best foot forward. And then the next little button there is called the about. So on the second screen you can see that's clicked into the about. And there are two sections here. There's an overview and there's page info. So you really want to get that stuff sorted. And you want to write as much as you can in there. In the page info one, uh, it actually has um, you know, quite a few sections for you to put in a short description, a long description. Let your personality shine. Don't, don't get too hung up on having to get a copywriter. Just put stuff in there. But talk about how you love photography, how you love being with kids, or you love seeing people in love. Like I've, you know, I've read some really quirky things. That personality and showing who you are is what makes people want to connect with you. So yeah. don't be afraid to show who you are. If you're a cat photographer, you know, talk about how you're the crazy cat lady. You know, you love it. You love cats. You love animals. You love pets. Like, just really don't be afraid. You know, judgment, if someone judges you, that defines them as a person that judges. It doesn't actually define you. You know, that's the thing about judgment. So just get it out there and it doesn't need to be perfect but it's just good for them to see your personality. Mm -hmm. So if we move on to the next one, yeah. the next one I, I alluded to before is about tagging. Yeah. So when you post um, anything in Facebook, um, we'll have a look at this one up here. So Nina Claire I think is in Italy or Bali or somewhere and she's there with the bride, Linda Sockage, okay. So all of Linda's friends have seen it. So you can see, I think there's like 85 or 95 people have liked this image. Yeah. So not just Nina's followers, but all of Linda's friends who couldn't be at the wedding, who they can all see this in their feed. Yeah. And see what she's written. She's just written these two the day before. Like it doesn't need to be rocket science. I think <laughs> you the, know what I mean. The photo tells a story, doesn't it? Yeah, and you guys, are, that's your art, that's your thing. Like, do you know yeah. how hard it is for me to find a decent photo to post? I have to go and, you know, either to put a photo of my children, which is pretty bad from an iPhone, or get stock images. You guys have the real deal. Like, this is, yep. you know, fantastic. So then the next page, the next image I've got, um, is this person has not only tagged the bride, but also the location. Yeah. Okay. So anyone that's following that location gets to see this as well. All right. So um, and all they've said is anyone want to get married on a flower farm in upstate New York? Yeah. And then they've done hashtag and they've um, they have uh, they've also tagged the the dress the person that made the dress designer. Okay. So it's very simple. You don't have to be writing a lot of stuff. I mean, if you're really good with words, go for it. But just, just, just post, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and do it, and do it regularly. Now, oh, you just jumped. Sorry, can you go back? Oh, sorry, you were still on that one. Huh? I just wanted to go back to number A. A is about reviews. So it's really good for you to get some of your customers on there doing reviews as well. So reviews here and get yourself a Google Plus page is also really important for your SEO. So. Um, you get your customers to go and put, um, you can send them a link to the Google Plus page and just ask them, go out and do like one day, commit yourself to one day a month, going back and just asking everybody in that last month to do a review for you. Okay? You've got to, just having a testimonial, you need them to go on and actually post it and put it in Google Plus. Google Plus will do you a world of good for SEO. 
it'll get you ranking. That's great. Yeah, that's a good tip, that one. I like that one. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I can still surprise you, Bernie. Oh, All right, next page. I'm still learning. Come on. I'm still learning. Okay, next page. Um, okay. Okay, so here, um, a fistful of bolts. So, again, this one has taken them back to their blog. Okay, so a blog is also another theme that you could do. If you're good at blogging and you've got uh, someone's wedding that comes up or um, you've done a series of, um, I don't know, product shots for someone or you've appeared in a someone else's wedding blog, you can write about it and then you can post a link to your website. Okay? And then you can make sure that you have a sign up on your website. So it's really good wherever you can to also get people to go back to your website. So look at this. All they've done is with Amanda and Brandon staring down the sun. So they're very hip, this full of bolts. I mean, you can tell by the name of the, um, the, the photography group. But they, um, you know, they, they, yeah, everything is kind of cool and hip. Um, and then we've got um, Fee, who's one of your clients, and she uses her personality. She's always doing really quirky, kind of funny, sensitive um, uh, posts where she puts her photo with a picture over it, and it's really cute. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you can see that she's tagging people. Okay? Mm -hmm. So show your personality. If your personality is a dry, dry humor, show that. Yeah? Don't be afraid. So you're just okay. fulfilling your brand, in other words. Yeah, that's right. Your brand is you. You're an extension of it. Yep. Just make sure that it's consistent everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and try not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's a bit about branding. Um, so here we go, Immerse. So she puts on every photo that she posts, she has her logo there. That's the top one. And Fee does the same. She puts in quotes sometimes and there she always has her logo. Okay. And then the other thing to do, which I didn't actually do, is when you click on the image, it takes you into the kind of like a pop-up page. And there's always spaces in there where you can write more text, you can tag people. Um, so always make sure that there's a link on there through to your website. It doesn't always show up on the front bit, so you can put text into the next bit. It's always good, to, really good to go back in there and add more text. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Okay, so that's Facebook. So have we got anyone here that has, I've lost the little doodacky. Where is it? Does anyone have any questions so far, something that they'd like to ask that we just haven't covered about Facebook yet? Um, poor Robin, I don't think she's got audio. No, Robin's uh, having uh, trouble, I think, unless, unless she's back on. Um, don't know whether so no one's got any questions just yet because I'm happy just before we move into Instagram. No. We can no. We, we talk Next about saying no. <laughs> talk about um, you know there's a lot of talk about uh, Facebook dying off and everyone's going to Instagram and and we know that um, Instagram has started advertising, but they're only taking on big clients like Mercedes that spend $100,000, is my understanding. Um, but it, do you feel that Instagram will be the thing of the future? Should we all be? Yeah, yeah we should be getting onto it now and starting to pump up some images and yeah, well, I, I think the, the great thing about the yeah, great thing about Instagram is that you can actually post from Instagram to Facebook. But I think you need to be on both. Um, I think there's uh, an opportunity for Facebook in terms of, particularly with your clients, we've noticed uh, on a, a couple of the campaigns that they've done recently in order to kind of grow their um, coverage, uh, the offers that they put out there that they just work really well. They're saying that Facebook will become the silver-haired kind of platform, so the young people, really young people, have moved off, yeah. and they're probably they're probably not going to Instagram. But Instagram will definitely be, um, grow and it's perfect because it's so visual. Yes. A lot of people m way prefer Instagram um, because it's also more. I don't know. There's less words. Yeah. As well, I mean, you often do find that a lot of people put in a lot of words, and I'll show you some a, a few examples of those. Um, um, so Robert has said how to post 
in Instagram easier, such as via a laptop? No, it is. It's it's really hard. You have to do it via um, the iPhone. So that's one of the um, or via your phone, I should say, via the app. Uh, they may change that in time, but at the moment it is. Um, you you kind of have to maybe put things onto your maybe into a Dropbox and then upload the photos from a Dropbox onto Instagram if it's the photos not actually sitting linked in your phone. And um, right, it's also again saying Google Plus is so hard to use. Yeah, I know it is horrible, but it it it, it may eventually die, but it is fantastic for your ranking. Yeah, so, I love um, it. You can. Yeah, you can outsource it. Like I Googled my name. I constantly Google my name just to see how I'm ranking yeah. and see what photos are coming up. And um, and my review on a colleague's – so I did a review on a colleague's um, website who does SEO, and yep. he just sent me a link and said, I'll do a review. And my name came up under his – with his business oh. before my own LinkedIn account, before my own About Me page. I was like, like I was number, for my own name, I was number two, three, and four, but number one was my review that I did on uh, Google Plus for his business. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so it just, that sh just showed me the power of it. It is horrible, and um, but a lot of what Google does, like Google Analytics and Google Webmaster, all those things that you need to, kind of to help with your website um, analysis and Google AdWords, like that is, they, they are all really bad and <laughs> surprising. Um, okay, well let's move on into yeah. this. So to set up your page, uh, I mean the main thing really is to always have your, you're very limited with the number of words, but you've always got to have your URL. So make sure you have your URL. And what I've shown here is that some people have a logo and some people have uh, their photo. I would suggest that branding is about your logo, so make sure that you have your logo there. Right. And you can see here, these are, um, you know, a couple of kind of the wedding industry um, home pages that they have, and uh, they you can start to see kind of the themes that people have. So it's good for you, if you want to get ideas about themes, um, go on, go and have a look now. How to do that? You might want to move to the next page. I think I might have shown it. Is use the search button down the bottom, the one next to the house, to to uh, search for hashtag things like if you're in the wedding industry or do newborn photography or photographer or weddings, wedding photographers and you can start to see people, you can see how these ones, people have, um, they now have a little button, the little green triangle on the right there. They, they actually, if you click that, you drop down, you start to see kind of um, associated businesses or businesses uh, or pages that people who follow this person are related to in the industry and so that's also another way to start exploring what other people are doing to get ideas. Yeah. So do you want to scroll to the next one for me? Yeah, we'll have a look. This is interesting with all the hashtags. Yeah, so they now start to um, put in as many hashtags as they can because when you go to do a, when someone goes to do a search for a hashtag, this post will come up. Okay, so if you uh, um, you want a hashtag, so they've got wedding photographer, wedding photography, bridal, gold gown, wedding dress, Melbourne wedding, and if you start to use similar hashtags in your, you know, so it's newborn. Um, I mean, some of the things that you could put in newborn photographer, newborn photography, newborns, yeah. um, you know, it's the same kind of thing, wedding photo, baby photo, uh, so all of those hashtags help you and then kind of being grouped when people are searching for things because I find that I get found uh, because I use things like uh, um, branding, brand design, logo design and so someone um, or if I'm doing positive, if I'm doing inspirational quotes I'll do positivity, I'll do and so people have found me because they're looking for those kinds of uh, people to follow to have in their feed. So you can put in 
uh, a some text, and you can actually put in quite a bit of text. Uh, I, I'm noticing that a lot there's a lot of text people are putting in about. So it's almost like a Facebook post, but they are using the hashtags way more than you would ever see it. Okay, keep going. So with the hashtags, if if you wanted to put all those hashtags on another post, would you just copy paste? No, you can't do that in um, on yeah. the phone. I just look at what you can cheat. Cheat. But what? Oh, um, how come some account such as Wedded Wonderland can get so many followers and likes? Are they real? Are faking followers and likes do any good for your account? No, I don't know. I don't believe it does because um, at the end of the day. You want, and they, that's what happened with Facebook, is that they cottoned on to people doing that, and then your your page could get frozen. So you want people that are engaging, and people that are, um, uh, yeah, people that are engaged, people that um, like you authentically. You want less interested people than more fakes. It's not, it's not, it's not going to do you any good. And plus, you can't. You, for SEO, you don't get ranking on Google. Your website gets ranked on Google. Okay. The fact that you've got an account, you have an, if you have a LinkedIn account and a Facebook account, you, that that will that will show up, but not because you've got more. Just because you've got an account. So um, I was just going to go and try and find this one that you were talking about. I don't know if I know who they are. Um, so let's move on to the next. Page. Mm -hmm. um, so what are they called? Wedded Wonderland. Yeah. So they could possibly have. I don't know. They could possibly um, a love affair, Eventbrite. Could they have paid yeah. paid for all that? Well, what there's you life? can actually. There are, well, what you can do is you can, and yeah, they could potentially have paid for it because there are people that are always liking me, and then they say, um, you know, we um, we grow your likes, kind of thing, and I just go, yeah, well, it's, it's, I don't want fake likes. Yeah. Um, yeah, fake. I don't know. They've done a, they've uh, done a lot of posts. I've paid for a lot of fake likes. You <laughs> have you? I'd rather pay for real likes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, but in my in my early days of, of learning and understanding, um, yeah, I think I've got four thousand likes on my Facebook page, but I think uh, three thousand of them are overseas, living in villages somewhere in the world. So they're not going to help. Yeah. Them. So yeah, I don't know. Look, um, I don't know. These people are actually trying to sell you a workshop about. Um, you know, strategy. So, I don't know. It could be actually it's one hundred and forty dollars. So those wedded Wonderland people that Robert's talking about uh, on the fourth of August actually have in Sydney an event that um, is going to help you with your social media. So, um, I don't know. It could be worth one hundred and forty dollars if they're from. You know, I don't think they would be offering a workshop about how to grow online success. Success if they are um, if they're paying for things because hmm. I think they'd be laughed at. So yeah. I'd say that those are, are real likes. So when we talked earlier about your strategy and themes, so you talked about one about the testimonial. So here's a cute one here. You know that they've taken a yeah um, beauty stones of the Yarra Valley Ben Potter wedding. He's and he's look at all those face those um, hashtags he's got. Wow. And then um, she takes pictures. He makes films. So they've actually got little videos in here as well sometimes. And there's another one here that they've got a photo, a photo of their photo book. Yep. Uh, or the albums that they sell. There's that photo we've got of the lady in the gold dress. Um, and there's a nice one where there's a photo that was taken in New Zealand, I think, where the photographer is. Someone's taken a shot of the photographer, and that had quite a lot of interaction. So, um, yep. you know, the candid shots. And the ones that are bloopers, and you know, think about your, you know, humour. Um, I mean, when you think about Seinfeld and why it was so successful. I mean, they were constantly, you know, laughing at themselves. 
yeah. you know, try not to take things too seriously, I think is the key with yeah. social media. So show your vulnerability, show your personality. Yep. Um, can you have all that wording already set up so that you can just paste it in or do you have to const So what happens is once you create, um, Greg, once you create a hashtag, it sits in your library of hashtags. So I can go hashtag um, and start with W, like for wedding, and all of my previous hashtags I've used will come up below and I just touch them. So it's not so much you can't copy and paste into um, into uh, Instagram, but you can select what's already been used in a um, in a post. Okay. If that makes that helps you. Yep. Okay, let's move. Thanks, Greg, for the question. I'm scrolling, Bernie. So we're going from. Uh, there's no more questions there, so we'll we will go to the next slide there, just as a recap. Okay. So yeah, so what I just wanted to show you through those was that first of all, it's really important to get your page set up, and then to get familiar with the using the tagging. So being strategic about who you're tagging. So you're tagging anything that was related to that business. Um, to that to that photo shoot, the park. So tag where you were parked, where it was, because um, you know when people search for that park, you know posts will come up. So tagging the park, um, tagging the person in the photo um, on their Facebook page. You do need to have them as a friend, I think, to let them to be tagged. The the bright, you know, who the outfits are from. Uh, so then, you know, so once you've got that foundation of your pages set up properly and you're kind of clear on your personality and you've got some, um, you've, you've set up your themes, then do that scheduling, like get it all done in one, in one day a month. You can schedule those, um, get it all set up and then you can kind of set and forget. Uh, some things you might want to just, you know, you start to get inspired and you kind of add in, you know, you don't, it doesn't, it's, it's not like there's a rule, that's the thing. I'm just trying to give you a framework to help you start take, taking some action and mm -hmm. just testing how things work. And don't get discouraged, you know, because it is, um, it's very noisy out there and, uh, and things can get lost in people's feeds. Uh, I think Instagram's a little bit easier if you do it like, um, you know, you can go into Facebook to see what times of the day people are um, posting um, when your people are watching you and uh, that is, um, so that gives you kind of an idea and in the evening is really good. A lot of people are on after 7.30 so I find that 9 o'clock my people are on and then, uh, you know, 8 p.m. in the evening. And when you go to your business page, there's um, five tabs across the top. One is page, one is messages, one is notifications, and one is insights. So in the insights page, you can go to, um, I think it's called uh, Reach, and it will tell you, um, is it Reach? It tells you what time of the day. Uh, no, actually, I think it's Visits and it tells you what time of the day people are on for you. Um, it tells you kind of the age group of people. Um, so you get to kind of start to see... Who's fun. You know, what, yeah, and what's a good time for you to, to do things. So you can schedule them for that time when you know that you've got more of a chance of your people that are following you and your friends to, to see you. Because, as I say, uh, there's a, it's very noisy out there. Um, it also, after, uh, after a month, you can go in and have a look at your overview, which is in the insights as well, and it will tell you which, which ones you got the most reach from. This is not paid, this is just organic. And you'll start to see what kinds of things people are interested in seeing. Okay, so. Um, that's where your that's where your your measurement can come from if you want to start getting serious about it. Um, um, we've got a question from Robert again. 
Um, about uh, just about paying for your Facebook, uh, pay the post on Facebook page. Uh, I assume he means boosting the post. Um, yeah. He's asking, what can I do about it? Take, take, pay the money for each post. It, it depends on how uh, many, It depends what the post so, is, I suppose, and, and and what reach you want. So. The important things about um, uh, it, uh, the important things about uh, paying for things on Facebook yeah. is that you want to start off with a goal. So what's the goal? Because then you'll know what to post. Because if it's an offer, then yes, you want to boost that so people can see it and they click through to your website for the offer or. Um, they put their name in the, you know, and PM you your their details. So it really has to happen. You don't want to be, um, don't worry about uh, paying for every single post. Make the post count. Yep. Okay. Um, again, you know, it's it, it comes back to what are you wanting to achieve through Facebook? Okay. What are you wanting to achieve? And you're wanting to grow your customers, then you're going to be putting in posts that uh, are offering them something. Okay, so I wouldn't be paying paying for everything. Now, the thing about sponsored um, sponsored ads or boosting your post is that you want to be very specific about who you're trying to target. So I'm not sure, Robert. Maybe you can tell me. Um, uh, um, and I've just seen Robin about Nicholas's um, thing. So I just want to finish with Robert. Um, uh, in if you want to call me, yeah, <laughs> one day, yeah, we'll and you're about to, YouTube. yeah, if, <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you want to call me about how to do a scheduled post, uh, a, a boosted post properly, so that you target the right group of people and you're not wasting money. Then um, give me a call and I can talk you through it. So why don't we do that now? Um, Nicholas has got we couldn't see it about how important is the bio and what should it say about us. Well, it should say that you love. Um, it should say something about you and why you photograph. What what kind of photography you do? So if someone's going to see it, you you say um, uh, put in something about your personality. I love coffee. That I love photographing newborns, brides, and families more, or something. Okay, does that? Um, you don't have much space on Instagram. That's the unfortunate thing. So you need to. Um, I'm just trying to see what I've got on mine, but um, you know. So where did work say a love affair? Weddings dash events dash fashion dash beauty. Uh, if I go into one of the other wedding, um, so Ben Potter wedding has love stories, wedding days, and everything in between. Okay, so that's very short. Um, she takes pictures. They say destination wedding duo, Australian photographer and filmmaker, and then they've got um, they've got when they're going to be in Bali. So everyone's a little bit different. Yeah. Wedding photography and video. Life is a story, art, and it is beautiful. We love telling our story alongside yours, telling stories, sharing love through wedding photography and film. So maybe the, the opening line that you have on your website, you know, what is your unique selling proposition? Um, we're in love, I'm in love, we're in love with love. I've been married for 40 years to the same girl and I never get tired of taking her photos and I now take photos of beautiful brides. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a copywriter, but you're trying to get... To be well, yourself, really, isn't it? Just put yourself... Yeah, and there's... There. And there's no right or wrong, so you know maybe that's important to to know that there's no right or wrong. I want to talk about outsourcing just to finish off. Um, yes. So, yes. So, um, what did you want to say? Well, what I wanted to say was my experience over the last three weeks, right? And yeah. as you know, um, I decided uh, that I would get a landing page done, right? Yeah. So my first thought and was to get it done cheaply, right? And so I posted this on Fiverr, 
and a lot of a lot of you out there may be familiar with Fiverr. That's F I V E double R. And I got a guy to do it or a company, and the quote was thirty five dollars. Well. I sent that to you and we struggled and I never got it up there and I didn't get it on my website and I couldn't get the links, whatever. But prior to coming to you, I also put it on Elance. And with Elance, they quotes varied from $145 to over $600 to put a landing page together. Now, I'd done all the copy. All I wanted was a bit of graphic design and link it in my website and put a, uh, a link to the payment gateway. So I had five or $35, you landed at 145 to 560. Now you fixed up all the rubbishy cheap stuff I did. I yes. showed you in the first place for 150 yes. bucks. So what I'm saying to everyone out there is outsourcing is a good word, but it's who you outsource to, and sometimes the right person is in your town or sitting next to you, and that's what I lost in my vision of trying to get this landing page. So maybe you want to make some comments on my mistakes. Uh, yeah, I think you wanted to. Um, I think you wanted to get it up, and that's fine. Uh, I also have used something called Freelancer. Yes. And uh, look, I just. Um, it's finding I, right I to... people, isn't it? Within those, um, you know, within Fiverr, Elance, uh, wherever you go, you've still got to find the right people. Yeah, and there's a lot of them out there. So the chances are that you waste just as much money trying to find the right person to get the job done well than if you'd paid a local person. Hello. So I won't be, yeah, I won't be going back there unless I have a very specific job. Yeah. Um, it is definitely cheaper, but I, the time, my time in managing that was my time out of my business as well. So the whole yeah. point of the outsourcing um, exercise actually cost me my time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I would always say that you go, you outsource uh, to people who you have been recommended to mm -hmm. and that, that again there's always a range of people it's like for SEO I know a guy that does it $600 a month and then I know another guy that does it $1,500 a month so uh, they're both I think they're both really good at what they do um, you know obviously I'm recommending more people to the cheaper guy <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah and I think that you you try to do what you can do so you know we talked a little bit uh, um, you do some of you, you you've the other thing about using those people is that a lot of like VAs to do stuff like this which can be cheap in the Philippines they yep. don't often get or understand your customer and yep. all of this has to be understanding your personality and your customer so that they can write things that are meaningful uh, but you can certainly um, outsource blocked blogs to be written and put together or just inspirational quotes um, you just say, I want, um, someone talked about the other day how they outsourced uh, 50 inspirational quotes about money. She does money coaching. Yeah. And, uh, and that worked kind of, you know, half of them were okay. The, the, other thing, the other thing is, you know, with a lot of the clients that I, I talk to, one of the things is websites and, and uh, a recent client I had, I said one thing you have to have on your, your, your website, you've got to have an opt-in form and, and she said, oh, no, I can't get one on the platform that this is set up at. And it's just preventing people going forward because they haven't sort of got the right advice in the first place. And you can outsource and get it like a website, get it really cheap as a template and whatever, but it may not have the back end that you need that can help progress your business. No, that's right. And that's what a lot of those, um, you know, things like um, Squarespace and Wix, you know, that's great. But, uh, or another one I came across the other day, um, what's that other one? Um, 
Zen. outcome. It's particular. It's particular for photographers, and, and yeah. it's really hard to actually get. Um, yeah, it's very inflexible, and it doesn't allow you to grow. And they ended up having to use subdomains and send people off their site, and uh, so in the end, it does end up costing you. Um, it does end up costing you in the long run, and you don't know what the impact is if you can't. At, Set up analytics. You don't even know how much you're losing, how much money you're losing. So. Um, and the uh, other, the other thing that I like about what you do with website design is you won't start unless you get to know the photographer and you get to know their target market and you ask all these questions and you draw it out of the photographer. So when it is set up, at least it's set up properly. Yes, that's right. Nicholas, what, what is your, is that a question? What should I say? Is that an example of what you'd like to say? No. As a family portrait photographer, my customer generally is mum and there's a great network to tap into a very talented woman. Of mums, of course, us mums are very talented. <laughs> um, Maybe he's having a conversation with someone else. Um, I think I think he's he's saying customer generally is oh for outsourcing. Yes, there we go. That's right, outsourcing. Very clever. Yeah, and actually, well, that's who we've got on the next screen is a lady who's actually a very talented mum who works with photographers, and she is currently managing um, the social media for uh, a couple of photographers and 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 a few other businesses and that's um Bianca at the social media B. So I've given you her um, website there an email address um, if you're interested in outsourcing and having a conversation. I think she does set up of the pages. She does she's got a free opt-in on her um, coming soon page about giving you a social media audit to understand where you could be reaching people more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but I wanted to say Google YouTube. So if you're having trouble understanding or remembering anything that we've said, or you just want to see how to do it, use YouTube and just search. Just or go into Google and put and click on videos, and there will be a myriad of videos that will come up about how to maximise Instagram, how to, um, and just look at the ones that have lots of um, views. So don't click on a video that's only got 10 views. Um, if it's got a few thousand views, you know that it's probably uh, a really good, um, a really good video. Uh, so. Um, and to hire a professional. Yeah, yeah or, or hire a professional. Uh, but you know, give it a go yourself and see how you go. And but that scheduling is really, uh, is really useful. Just one day, one Sunday, um, or Sunday's a family day. Maybe Monday, once a month. Or Fridays when you know things are quiet. You know that you've traditionally got a quiet day, relatively quiet day. Just schedule it in because if you don't book it in, you won't do it. Um, oh, so that's our message for today: is to take some action. Um, there's a lot of things that hold uh, small business people back. Photographers, and I've got 12 here. Um, I could go through them, but it's getting a bit late. We all need to go to bed and think about these things. Um, if you want to contact uh, Joanna, uh, her website's there. Um, she's quite open to the odd question or two. My website's there. Um, Except you've left out an E on your name. My name? Uh, everybody knows me, Joanna. That's all right. <laughs> I often would leave the H out of your name, uh, Joanna. Yes, I know. Two H. That's right. Yeah, but <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out to everybody, that I made a mistake. I will move forward on that, all right? All right. And did you show that, are you going to show the screen about the other resources, the mindset ones? Yes, I've already you shown that. Out. No, I've shown that. And if they want that, I'll send it to them. I was hoping everyone would photograph that on their iPhones. And if they didn't, just get your iPhone out and photograph that. Yeah, so this is some of that stuff if you kind of, you know, secretly thinking that it might be affecting you. Um, and these are lots of, there's quite a few videos there on YouTube that are really good about how to overcome that perfectionism, what's going on, 
why do we do it, why don't we act. Um, uh, Brene Brown's really good about this stuff, so it's well worth, uh, you know, they're only like four minutes, they're not long, they're not long videos as well. Um, Mostly the TED yeah. Talks. All right. So next week, same time, same place, we're going to talk about selling, we're going to talk about what's holding you back a little bit with your sales. Hopefully we can give you some really good advice on getting better results financially because that's what I'm about. I'm just about trying to help photographers make more money. That basically sums me up. Um, so tonight, uh, thanks Johanna, that was great. Um, my, my head is swimming. Um, I picked up a couple of points there. Um, but I'm going to have the opportunity because this has been recorded. I will watch it through again and <laughs> everyone will have the other opportunity. This will be up on YouTube, on my YouTube channel in about uh, probably by tomorrow night. So we can all look at it. So thanks everybody for attending. And thank, thank you. you. And just go do something and get that social media happening. And we'll see you yeah, next week. I want to see posts now, everybody. Post, everybody post. All right, before you go to bed, everybody post. Thank you. Good, Good night. Bye. Good night all. All right, bye.